John Arnold, do you think there'll be a deal this weekend? I think there is a need for a deal as soon as possible. And I'm very pleased to see uh, the German presidency and uh, all the prime ministers now taking position this week uh, to come to an agreement, even if some say that there will be no agreement at the end of this week. But if it is not this week, it should be in the next two weeks. And it's important to keep the pressure because from this decision on the money uh, available uh, depends uh, the, the negotiation of all the financial instruments which will really help the recovery to take place. Do you think there'll be a deal this weekend, Chris? I doubt it. I think that people will come close. I think behind the scenes a lot of compromises will be, will be explored. Um, but some governments, of course, have positioned themselves as deeply critical of, of, of what's on the table. And they've got to sell a package and the possible compromises to, to their people. So they'll want to be seen to go to the wire. Um, so I doubt if there'll be an agreement this weekend, but I very much hope there will be. Because of course, you know, if there is one, then uh, unless there's a massive watering down of, of what's on the table, then you know, it will be a real advance for the whole of the European Union. Now, the budget negotiations in the EU are always difficult, they're only every seven years, but this seems even more difficult because you have different camps, uh, East and West, and particularly you have the, the Frugals, uh, a group of countries, the net contributors to the budget, who really want the amount of money uh, limited and want conditions. Uh, do you think things are moving in their direction? Well, I think there is uh, a move towards uh, conditionality on the use of the money and uh, everybody begins to be uh, aware that uh, there is a need to, uh, to make sense in the spending and um, the Green Deal objectives are there, digitalization uh, is also an important uh, objective and I see that uh, most of the, the countries are taking positions uh, which are going in that direction. So uh, that is uh, at least a convergence we may see from uh, east to west, from north to south to, uh, to come to an agreement on this. Uh, this time you've got the group of, of, of four frugals, bunch of net contributors. Are they winning the argument in the European Council? Well, anyone can win the argument because it's by unanimity. So every voice counts. And it's not simply, of course, the, uh, the uh, debate between the frugal countries who uh, contribute to the budget and they want in greater control over the way the money will be spent. But of course, it, the values issue comes in. I mean, we've just seen the, the election in, in Poland, um, if you like, won by what I suspect most people in the European Union would regard as the wrong person. Um, and, and yet Poland stands to be one of the major beneficiaries of the financial agreement. I mean, the Dutch don't like that, quite clearly. Mm. The du Dutch liberal society objects to giving money to a country which is, uh, w where the leadership is apparently homophobic. Mm -hmm. So the, you know, it's, uh, it's a real mixture between the, the financial equations and the values that underlie the European Union and whether or not it's possible to ensure that they are protected and promoted. Now there's always an issue with spending all the money that's available in the EU budget. Uh, what needs to be done to make sure that this huge pot of money, much more than the EU's ever put together, um, that that is actually spent for the purposes it's designed for? Spending depends on projects and uh, it's quite clear that uh, good projects are needed and uh, it is the moment to prepare these projects, be it on renovation of buildings, be it on renewables, be it on energy efficiency measures and, and so on. So I think that uh, a lot of work has been done in the past months to, to show the areas where uh, the Green Deal uh, means something. And uh, so it is now up to the companies and to authorities which are concerned to uh, prepare good projects. There will be national recovery plans uh, to be established before the end of the year by the, the country, so it will start then, it will be assessed by the Commission and then the projects will have to come. What needs to be done to make sure that the money that's there is actually used by businesses and, and you know, to get people back to work and get the economy moving again? Indeed, that's a real problem. And we've all seen the film where someone gets 100 million euros and they've got to spend it in a week. And how do you spend 100 million euros in, in a week? I mean, we look to shove already schemes, don't we? The object of this money, after all, is to give a real boost to the economy uh, and to um, put people back at work and give, put money in their pockets, which they can generate. And you know, a virtuous circle um, is developed. But uh, that means that there's a real opportunity for people who are looking at uh, uh, the green agenda in particular, where the legislation is being 
being put in place, a lot of thought, a lot of desire to see European leadership in this area. I mean, suddenly, money is going to be available, which no one had ever dreamt of be be before. Mm -hmm. um, that unlocks the door to all sorts of exciting projects. Okay. So we're going to be watching the negotiations this weekend very closely. Maybe we can um, talk again next week about uh, how far they got. Uh, but for now, Chris Davis, thank you very much. Thank you.